brewery life. Today, we'll be checking out fermenters and bright tanks. What all those valves do, the differences between them. So let's head to the brewery and go check it out. Hey guys, Jasper here with Brewery Life. I just wanted to show you a typical fermenting vessel. This is a 10-barrel Premier stainless and some typical, typical connections you can find on one of these tanks. If you look up top, the back right pressure relief valve, that's a safety feature that releases pressure when it builds over 15 PSI. If you look at the middle pipe connection up top, that's the spray ball. So if you wonder what top goes the spray ball, it's always in the middle. On top also is a blow-off arm. That is where the blow-off bucket and fermenting the CO2 will come out of the top of the fermenter. The last piece up top is four-inch hot part. You can dump hops or uh, maybe fruit in your cellar through that hot port before you crash it. Okay, working down onto this side. This is actually our butterfly that will control what liquids go to that CIP uh, spray ball on the inside of that. This is a pressure relief, or not a pressure relief, sorry, a pressure gauge mm -hmm. that tells us how much pressure is currently inside the tank. Over here we have our manway. This is how you open it up and inspect your fermenter. Working this way, we have our spickle, which is just our sample valve where we test our gravities. Here's our blow-off arm, so this is where we'll connect our blow-off tube into a blow-off bucket um, and bubbles out CO2. This two-inch port, some fermenters don't have this, but this is a spudding port. If you wanted to put a special contraption on here to let it ferment under, say, 7 PSI the whole time, then you can adjust that machine. You don't want to rely on the pressure relief port up top to do that. That's more of a safety feature. So some people will put a spudding device here. Working down, this is where our wrapping arm is. This uh, rod right here shows the angle of how that's sitting inside the tank. We want that up and sideways for fermentation and down for cleaning. And so this is the wrapping arm. And finally, the bottom is the bottom just blowout. This is where you drop your cone and uh, clean and run CIP loops through. So guys, that's a typical fermenter in a typical brewery. Hopefully you got an idea of what you're looking at when you stare at one of these things. Okay, Thanks. so these are our Alpha Brew FDs. I just wanted to compare these to our Premier FDs and show you some differences you will see in the industry when shopping for these. If you look up top, the actual connections of the spray ball and blow-off arm are in a little bit different configuration. The blow-off arm is also an inch and a half tube instead of a two inch tube. Coming down here, we have our ladder racks. So you can put a ladder uh, on there and climb up and clean the top. We also use them for hose holders. Coming down here, the manways are very similar on these two tanks. But over here, we have an external temperature gauge. We just rely on RTD sensors or uh, the main glycol temperature controls on the Premier. But these have a, another double check, if you will. You can also see the pressure gauge here is a little different. It's in this U shape and it makes it removable. It's not a screw in like the Premier's. I like this because I like taking the pressure gauge off when I'm running CIP loops so it doesn't spike the pressure gauge. So I do like this feature. If you look at our spickle, you can tell it's a little different on these ones. Um, not that big of a difference, unless if you want to hook up a ZOM, that spickle is a little bit better. Coming down here, blow off arms the same, and the racking arms a little different here. On the premieres, they were fitted with a DIN fitting, which means more of a screw on fitting that allows you to loosen it a little easier, rotate this racking arm. This is actually a two and a half inch sanitary thing here, a little harder to rotate, um, but you want to make sure you have your Teflon gasket here to make it easier to rotate. Blow off bottom, still the same. So I hope you guys got an idea of some typical differences you can find from manufacturer to manufacturer of a 10 barrel FB. Cheers. Okay, this is our bright barrel tank, or BBT. As you can see, the general differences between a bright barrel tank and a fermenter are the size and shape. They're a little shorter and squattier. The surface area allows for better carbonation, but it doesn't have a cone bottom to collect yeast off of. It's a dish bottom. If you look up top, there's only one arm coming off the top. 
that's a CIP arm. There's no blow off arm also, so this tank isn't made to ferment in. Also up top that might be harder to see is a pressure relief valve. That's a 30 pressure relief valve, not a 15. Coming down this side of the tank, you may also see there's a sight glass. Sight glasses are very nice on bright tanks because you can see how much beer you have left after packaging. Our pressure gauge, our butterfly, are very similar to our alpha tanks. And the last thing that's a major difference is our carb stone assembly that sits in these bright tanks. That allows us to bump up our carbonation to the final volumes that we like before packaging. Hopefully you enjoyed that video on fermenters and bright tanks. If you have any questions or ideas on future videos, leave them in the comments below. Smash that like button and subscribe, and I will see you on the next round.